In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the different methods that you can use in Autovectus to solve the phase correction function so that your FTMS data can be shown in absorption mode. If you haven't already watched it, I recommend watching the Absorption Mode 101 video that I've put up on YouTube, as this will provide a lot of useful background information that will help you understand the content of this video. I'll put a link to that YouTube video in the information below. The difficult part of the process of producing an absorption mode FTMS spectrum is correcting for the different phase angles associated with ions oscillating at different frequencies. In both ICR and Orbitrap class mass spectrometers, there's an algebraic relationship between the ion oscillation frequency and its phase angle. And therefore, if we can solve for the function that describes that relationship, we can correct for the phase shift seen in the ion signals, and that's what allows us to produce an absorption mode spectrum. As explained in the Absorption Mode 101 video, the difficulty is that in most mass spectra, the phase correction function is undersampled, and so it can't simply be solved algebraically, and therefore we have to find other ways to solve it. In the Autovectus package, there are four different methods provided to produce an absorption mode spectrum, and in this video, we'll go through each one of them in turn. This flow diagram shows the four possible routes. The first of these routes is known as recalculate. If you process your spectrum by this route, Autovectus will attempt to generate the phase correction function based only on the data in the spectrum itself. It does this by brute force fitting a phase correction function over a small region in the spectrum, and then extending this out several times to cover the whole spectrum using a machine learning method to optimize the phase correction function at each stage. Unfortunately, you can't simply use the brute force method to fit the phase correction function over the complete spectrum in one step, because there's too many potential solutions to search. This recalculate route will work for both ICR and Orbitrap mass spectra. So let's look at this working for both of these types. We'll start the demo by processing this Brooker ICR file, but you'll see later that the process for an Orbitrap file is almost identical. In Autovectus, this is the control that you use to change which of the processing routes you're using. Currently you can see I have it set to recalculate. And in order to start the processing down that route, I need to click the begin button. When the begin button was clicked, Autovectus loaded the transient associated with the file we're processing, Fourier transformed it, and is now presenting the user with a magnitude mode spectrum to use to identify the peaks that will be used to optimize the phase correction function. Phase correction is a process a lot like mass recalibration in that you need a series of good peaks in order to be successful. On this screen, the user can change how the peaks are defined, but Autovectus will attempt to identify the correct peaks to use for phasing. And so for this example, we'll just accept what Autovectus has recommended. Once it knows where the peaks in the spectrum are, Autovectus can suggest an initial region that can be used for brute force fitting. Brute force fitting simply means that Autovectus will iterate through all the possible phase correction functions for a small region and identify the one that it thinks is best. This brute force fitting screen gives the user a lot of opportunity to unpick problems with solving the phase correction function, but this is only really needed for unusually difficult spectra, and if you need help with that, please contact us directly. However, in the vast majority of cases, Autovectors will select the correct brute force fitting region and will correctly identify the phase correction function for it. So in most cases, all you'll have to do is click the Accept Calibration Function button, and that's exactly what I'll do here. But before I do, I'll explain what will happen next. The phase correction function generated by this brute force fitting method is only an estimate of the true phase correction function in this region. So Autovectus uses a genetic algorithm-based optimization method to tune the phase correction functions. So the process to go from this initial fit to a complete phase correction function across the whole spectrum will be to optimize this brute force fit on this small region, 
and then extend out to look at a slightly wider region of the spectrum and re-optimize the phase correction function across that. And then auto vectors will automatically repeat this process over ever larger regions of the spectrum until the whole spectrum can be phased. The reason I've explained that now is that, as you'll see, it all happens quite quickly. I'm sure you spotted the genetic algorithm window popping up, and it'll do that every time AutoVectus is optimizing a phase correction function. But the end result is that the whole spectrum has been phased, and the absorption mode spectrum is now shown in green on the screen. So that was the recalculate route being tried for ICR data, and exactly the same process can also be used for Orbitrap data. So let's try processing an Orbitrap file by this recalculate route. The first thing I need to do is change the file path and the file type, and I do that using these controls. This file contains an Orbitrap transient in one of the SpectraSwiss formats saved from their booster unit, and that's the one we'll use for this demo. And we also have to tell the program that we're using an Orbitrap type transient, so we'll select the Orbitrap option in the file type box. And because this is a short Orbitrap transient, I'll also increase the number of zero pads to three. But apart from those three changes, I won't make any other alterations, and now we can just hit begin to start processing. So although the recalculate route looks complicated, in practice, most of that workflow is automated under the covers by AutoVectus, and all you'll have to do is click the odd accept button here or there. And now we've looked at the recalculate route of processing, now let's go on to look at the even more simple ab initio route. The ab initio mode of phasing works for Brucker ICR files that contain information about how the ions were excited inside the ICR cell. Autovectors can then use that information to calculate the theoretical phase correction function for that spectrum. Unfortunately, this theoretical mode can't be used for Orbitrap spectra because there's no information stored in those files that could be used to create a theoretical phase correction function. And even for ICR spectra where the theoretical phase correction function can be calculated, it's usually not accurate enough to be used by itself as space charge effects and other instrument issues can adjust the true phase correction function that the ions in the cell actually experienced. Therefore, AutoVectus uses the theoretical phase correction function only as a starting point, and then applies its genetic algorithm to optimize the phase correction function to the ions that are actually in the data. It all probably sounds quite confusing, but as you'll see in practice, the whole process for producing an absorption mode spectrum by this route is almost completely automated, and it is in fact much easier for the user than going through the recalculate route that was demonstrated before. To activate ab initio mode, you just select it using this control and then hit begin as normal. You still need to choose which ions to use for phasing the same as you would for the recalculate mode. But then the rest of the phasing process is completely automated. So, when you undertake phasing by this ab initio route, the only point of manual input is when you need to accept the selection of peaks to be used for phasing, and by and large AutoVectus will do that correctly for you as well. As I've just demonstrated, ab initio mode is so easy to use that for users who are processing Brucker ICR data, we recommend it as the standard route to use for producing absorption mode spectra. For users who are processing ICR data in the MIDAS file format, that can also contain information about the ion excitation in the cell 
and that will also allow you to access the Ab Initio route. But if you're a Midas user, please contact us directly for specific training on that file type. Once you've successfully phase corrected a file to absorption mode, you can then save the phase correction function to a small file known as a phase correction function or PCF file that will store the parameters of that phase correction function so you can reuse it. Autovectors will save this PCF file in either the same folder that the file exists in or, if it's a Brooker.d file, actually inside that file. Then, there are two different ways that Autovectors can reuse the information stored in these PCF files. You can simply ask Autovectors to reapply a previously solved phase correction function for the current file. Or, if you have several files that were recorded using the same settings, you can ask Autovectors to use the phase correction function for a similar file and optimize it for this file. The difference between these two settings is that when using a previously optimized function for the same file, Autovectors knows where the file is and doesn't have to use the genetic algorithm to optimize the phase correction function. However, when using a phase correction function for a different file, you need to tell Autovectors where that file is, and then once it's loaded, the phase correction function will have to be re-optimized in case there was any space charge or other change which affected its accuracy. When we get to this step, you'll see, however, that this is all automated. At the end of the previous demonstration, we'd used the ab initio route to phase correct the spectrum. So this means that we have an optimized phase correction function, and we can save that to a PCF file by clicking here. So now, let's try reprocessing this spectrum using its PCF file. To do that, we need to change the processing mode to Use Previous for this file. Now we can click Begin. Of course, you can't see any change in the spectrum, but the fact that the Begin button is flashing yellow again tells me that the processing is complete. And you'll note that by selecting Use Previous for this file, Autovectus has automatically found the right PCF file to apply to the spectrum that we were processing and has entered the file path into this control. If you wanted to use a PCF for a different file, you simply browse for it using this Browse button. But for this demo, we'll keep using the same PCF file. What I will do, though, is change modes to use Previous for another file, and then we'll process this same spectrum down that route. As the processing goes through, you'll notice that the genetic algorithm window will pop up whilst the spectrum is being processed, and this is the system re-optimizing the phase correction function to this specific spectrum. And as before, we can tell that Autovectus has reached the end of the processing workflow, because the Begin button is flashing again. But to summarize these two routes, once you have a PCF file containing the parameters of a phase correction function, you can then use either the Use Previous for this file mode or the Use Previous for another file for processing data from either ICR or Orbitrap instruments. We find that Use Previous for Another File route can be particularly useful if you're batch processing a large number of files that were all collected using the same instrument settings. And it's also the mode that Autovectus uses under the covers when processing FT mass spectrometry imaging datasets. And so, to summarize the contents of this video, there are four potential routes for producing absorption mode spectra using Autovectus. These are the recalculate route that uses data in the spectrum itself to produce the phase correction function. Then there is the ab initio route that uses information stored in Brucker or Midas ICR files to produce a theoretical phase correction function that Autovectus then optimizes. And there are the two modes that produce absorption mode spectra using phase correction function files that Autovectus has already saved. These are the use previous for this file and use previous for another file modes. and you can easily choose which mode to use using this control. And so, that's it. 
I hope this summary of the four different processing routes you can use to create absorption mode spectra in AutoVectis has been useful. And as always, if you have any questions, you can contact kogawalab.com directly or the team at SpectraSwiss.